Hello and welcome back to the letter. After thinking and possibly thinking what could happen if I chose Isabella or Rebecca, given the situation, here's what I had concluded. I could go with Rebecca in hopes that we somehow get more points to get past the uh, starting area with Rebecca. And then, but potentially make the situation terrible for Isabel, given that technically she's right. Because I kind of think logically and be like, yeah, Isabel's correct. We didn't believe her, so now we're in this mess. Or just go with Rebecca just for sake of me wanting a certain end <laughs> with Rebecca and Ashton being together. But that's not going to have it as just like. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> um, so yeah, with that, I think I'm gonna go with logical reasoning and go with Isabel. Sadly. So yeah, see how this goes. You okay. I thought so. <laughs> Rather than answer, her shock subsides. She merely averts her gaze and hastily wipes the tears off her cheeks, like she only noticed them in that moment. Then without another word or even me my eyes again, she gently brushes away my hand and runs off, leaving an awkward hush in her wake. Becca soon slumps on the chair as well has just left, gingerly, gingerly reaching up the press of the bridge her nose and breathing out a ragged exhale. Arms like this have always drained both her patience and energy usually more than her ratty students do, despite being no stranger to it. I mean, given the situation, um, knowing how uh, Becca is, she's probably feeling a bit heartbroken that we chose Isabel. Uh, I just feel so bad for Becky. <laughs> oh. It's no excuse for it to say those things, though and though and my disapproval must be clear enough on my face. When she finally glances back at me, her exhaustion immediately shifts back to annoyance, with curving down to a tight frown. Across my arm response wing, action verging instinct into the instinctive in the face of her uh, irritation. Also, I forgot to mute Discord. I'll just do that right now. Okay. Regardless of my opinions about this, I don't say anything yet. Not until she's the one willing to talk. Another minute passes while we stare at each other down, but eventually she breathes out again and reflects her rigid posture. What do you want, Ash? If you have something to say, just tell me, or I'm going back upstairs. Did you really have to say it like that? Well, how do you want me to answer her? Do you want me to just let her go there and do what she wants? I know you won't be too happy if I did that. That's a low blow, Rebecca. Even for you. We all know she wasn't even planning on staying here this long. There was no need to bring it up if all you wanted to do is stop her. Did you even see how she's acting? She's not a child anymore. Even my students can do better. <sighs> Becca, she'll listen if you'll just ask her properly. I know you mean well and you do have a point. But please be a little more thoughtful next time. Go think about it for a while. By some miracle, the whole discussion ends right there. Becca likes to stay silent, or at least it's how it seems when a minute or two passes and she says nothing. Rare occasion when she almost always has something on her mind. <clears throat> Only an uneasy atmosphere hangs in the air. Finally, I decide to remove myself from the room. She doesn't stop me. Instead, something. In uh, explicable flickers momently in her eyes, one that quickly disappears only until only a vague notion of it remains in memory. And on that one exchange, I've caught a short, clear glimpse of what has shifted, of what's inevitable. So much has changed throughout the years. I'll never be the same person we once were. That fits for the better. We've yet, we've yet to know. With all had descended in the main lounge once I return. She's nowhere to be seen. People continue to trickle out instead of in, uh, uh, out instead of in. 
By the time I get back, only two tables remain, remain unoccupied. Soon these people too will be gone. The whole place will be devoid of anyone. Frankly, its current state really lends the place an entirely different vibe. Along with the soothing strum of strings and the steady beat of drums playing overhead, there was a common sense to this. Far cry from times that I'd been here before. Perhaps it's for this reason why Isabel has chosen this place to retreat. I wonder if we wouldn't be with Isabel if we didn't choose her side. <laughs> she sits quietly in the furthest corner of the room, one of the tables set right beside the windows. She usually keeps the curtain closed around this hour, but a small portion of it has been pulled back, revealing the busy streets outside. Late afternoon light spills right through it, outlining her small form and pulling on the surface table where both her arms rest. Oh, it's the note. Or the letter. Same thing, right? <laughs> Same difference. Um, in her hands, she flips a piece of folded paper, turning it from one side to the other. Without any purpose. The letter. A small frown creases her, f uh, f her forehead while she stares at it. Yet there's something oddly tranquil in the picture she has unknowingly painted. Something I can't bring myself to disturb, only for a few seconds. It's one of those moments again. The rare ones. Ones where she's too still, too quiet. The opposite of her usual self. But it's these that often leave a mark. Not her cheery disposition or lively attitude, but these short, few seconds of wordless silence, where the soft sighs and the slightest movement sing louder. The smallest minuscule things that tell you about the person and her strength more than any words can express. It's these that uh, carve a vivid memory, no matter how brief it lasts. She glares at me, annoyed, and just like that, all of it melts away. Gone is the stillness replaced quickly by the teasing and friendly jibs. Back again to what we're used to. What's easy, what's familiar, with every truth to convey incredibly goes unsaid between going us. To destroy an important piece of evidence if you keep doing that, Bell. But she's far from angry. But sup, maybe? Who wouldn't be? While I do agree with Rebecca, her words still hit below the belt. Regardless, Isabel doesn't seem like she'll start shouting at me, at least to every other people I've aggravated, intentionally or otherwise. Some light talk may just do the trick, coax her out of the Come mood. On. If you keep staring at the table like that, you're going to bore a hole on it. I really don't want to OG a new table. You <laughs> pick the most expensive one and leave me begging on the streets. She levels a quick glance at me, her expression dry and passive enough to drain every color out of the room. It's as if I just told her a terrible joke and she's expecting there'll be more of it. Really now. She needs to give me more credit than that. My jokes are funny when I want them to be. I really don't care. I'd even take pictures and post them online. Go away, Ash. I don't want to talk right now. Yeah, it sounds half hearted at best. Like what's happening is a race sapped every bit of energy in her. And all that's left are the words. Pretty soon those two will lose their meaning and leave a hollow shell in their wake. It's very unusual to see her like this. Everything has already gone to shit. I'd like at least this one thing to stay normal. So somehow, somehow we managed to continue for the better half of our hour, of the hour. Talking, joking with her short, feeble response, banter never goes anywhere. But it's enough. In the grand scheme of things, with the chaos and the death shadowing over us, these little inconsexual sequel is I can't speak inconsequential moments that matter. There we go. Uh, it's her smile after and when it finally finally rings easy and free of okay, her burdens. I have another one. I don't want to hear it, Ashton. Go away. No, really. Listen, I know someone who talks like an owl. Will you leave me alone if I bite and ask who? A pause. And then she frowns as the realization slowly dawns on her. 
Fusion of flashes fleetly, fleetling across her face before eventually settling on a grimace. <laughs> Suddenly, she hugs her arms closer to herself and looks away, perhaps in her best attempt to stay angry. To no avail. A matter of seconds, she'll shake her shoulders, shake laughter. She's trying to You're contain. Awful, and I really hate you. Just, just leave. <laughs> It's contagious, her mirth. <laughs> Soon I'm joining her in it, briefly forgetting every problem that has piled up and continues to weigh down on us. Laughing without reservation or care until only a familiar warmth lingers once both our amusement ebbs away. Somehow with her, these things have always come Feeling easy. Better? A little you're still lame. <laughs> like you're laughing right now. Only because your humor is terrible. <laughs> right. Keep telling yourself that. I know it's funny. And you know what? If you've kept frowning like that, your face might have cracked. That would have been really messy and ugly. <laughs> if Claire's can kill the one she sends my way, I'll probably be dead by now. Seeing so it directed my way, it takes only a few quick seconds for me to realize how she might have also taken my statement. How wrong and rude it might have sounded in her ears, however unintentional it is. Never been good with words, but that's never an acceptable excuse, is it? Suddenly taking the br brute brunt of her anger seems less complicated than correcting or explaining myself, nevertheless I, I try. What? Ah, oh, god, crap, crap, damn it, that was, that was so not what I meant. <laughs> god damn I it. I should... you look better when you're smiling. <laughs> I love how that's put the text like that. Her <laughs> glare doesn't even wane, in fact, I think it intensified. The brewing storm. <laughs> Face of it, under the sharpness of her stare and her annoyance, do what any person with a good sense of self preservation does. Keep my mouth shut and shift my attention elsewhere. Crowd outside looks very interesting today. Maybe Thank I should. Share all of it in a voice too small to quiet. But when I turn to her, only, to, only those words, her gratitude, resonate throughout the whole room. Not the soft clinking of silverware somewhere, nor the last trains of music fading into the silence above us. It's the, it's the meaning behind her gaze, as she holds mine that lingers. Steady and flinching and open, the same way she looked at me all those years ago. Bright eyes and an expression softening into a tender smile. I didn't understand it then, how easy it is for her to wear her heart in her sleeve. Now she never shies away from expressing herself, even among people she barely knows. How she can go through everything without losing herself. Now, now it's among the hundreds, the thousands, the hang unspoken between us, trivial, little things with worth still too big to put into words. Either because it's too early, or because there's never really a proper time. For now though, this, this'll do. <sighs> Until the moment itself dwindles. Until reality pulls us back in, reminding us of the things we set aside in its favor. Bella, about what happened with Rebecca earlier. I should probably apologize to Becca. I know she only means well. And I said some really bad things. The corners of her mouth quirks up, almost as if she's too ashamed of the things she's said. Don't worry, she can be pretty stubborn, but she'll listen. Especially to you. You think? You're one of the few people she likes. She won't stay angry for long. I can vouch for it. Out of water. <laughs> Get the. She has a point, though. The spell freezes in an instant. Pleasant air around us dissipates. She shifts her attention back to her hand again. Both clenched so tightly that her knuckles visibly pale. I, I know, Ash. I just thought. I just thought we'd find something in there. That if I go back, we'll get the answers we need. I would imagine we might. I found the letter there, so maybe, right? It's not that I don't agree with her or hell. I've been concerned the same thing. It's the only lead we have, after all. But Rebecca also has a point I will always agree with. No matter how desperate I am, it's not going to be a simple walk in the park. Who knows what we might find in there? she comes with me, I won't be able to guarantee her safety. She'll be in even greater danger. Hence, alone. 
There's a need to go back to that cursed place I'm doing on my own. Whether or not the rest of them agree with this plan is inconsequential. Their well-being is my top priority, and I'm not just about to drag them in there with me. I just want to tell her as much despite the determination and desperation in her eyes. Anything to keep her safe. Are you telling me I could have chosen Rebecca and then make up for it here? I hope we get a choice for Rebecca so I can make up for it then. This is bullshit. <laughs> so, let's see if I fuck it up. Forget it, Belle. You're not going back to that mansion. <laughs> can I do anything right? But Ash, what about... This isn't up for debate. Do you really think they'll just let you in? Do you really think they'll give a Tam if you walk in there carrying that stupid letter of all things? No, but there has to be something we can tell them. Kinda want to reload. <laughs> but no. We will continue with my fuck-ups. Whatever ending I get, I'm probably going to do a bit extra just for the sake of getting the best ending. <laughs> probably. Ash, they were with me during the open house. They have to know. They're in as much trouble as we are. They're living in that place. That ghost woman came from there. Both her and the letter. Something's in that house, Ash. And whatever it hides might be the only thing that'll get us out of this mess. All right. Supposing you do find an answer there. What happens? Let's say that by some dumb luck, you got inside and found something. I don't even have to bring up what they did to Zack. In fact, what they'll do to you is the least of our problems. Oh yeah, because Ash hasn't brought it up. Well, if you see her again, what if she goes after you? What are you going it's to do? It's not like we have any other choice. Besides, I'm pretty sure you've already thought of the same thing. Admit it. Yep. That doesn't mean I'm going to let you run straight into trouble. What you're planning to do is risky. For you. Give it up, Isabella. Oh shit. <laughs> Realization comes way too late and my throat closes up as soon as I realize what has just slipped out of my mouth. And I don't bother wanting to read it I'm like, yup. <laughs> Shit. It was supposed to be a speech, damn it. We're just carefully picked to ease people into the idea, especially her. Who has always seen Zack as the decent older brother she never had as family. The way her expression shifts from terror to disbelief then to anguish makes the horrible lump in my throat feel more unpleasant. There's a sorrow in it, probable enough. It's the meaning of what I've said since then. A pain I can't even hope to understand. When that will all that we'll all deal with in our own ways. Can't even bring myself to look her straight in the eye. Respectively, a spell merely clams up. No resistance, no further argument like I've come to expect from her. Does he even shed a single tear? Uncharistics. Well, I mean, she's lost a, quite a few people in this game so far. The silence has stretched far too thin, till the air, the whole room grows awkward and suffocating. Stand still, they'll get us to nowhere. Although, if there is one thing our talk has wonderfully succeeded at, it's making me feel like a total asshole and a hypocrite. And I am, considering my plans tonight. Sure, I could tell her, but what good would it do? I do intend to tell G about leaving tonight. As to know if he's going to be keeping an eye on them for me. The person's already enough, however. Now, simply letting someone in on the plan makes me iffy. Broadcasting that circle, feeling too much would just cause another pointless concern. But someone has to be aware, at least of where I'm heading off to, in case, in case things don't pan out. Expect the worst, even if I've only intended to do a quick survey of the place. In my words, in my own words, frisky. Isabella doesn't need to be burdened with the worry my entire scheme entails. I like to think that yes, to some extent, she understands, even if she does not entirely agree with me. The lemma's clear in her. Otherwise, her skull won't have a deeper set to it. Lips wouldn't be pressed in a thin line. Her hand would no longer be balled into fists. She will push that argument if she doesn't. I know she has no lack of things to say. Maybe it's because she has already heard the same thing from Rebecca. Maybe my words have made her come to her senses. 
Either way, it's best that we simply leave it here for now. I've already said enough. Stand up as soon as footsteps shuffles from the next room. It uh, condenses slow, hesitant. Charlotte Rebecca comes into view, clutching her hands firmly in front of her, sporting the same uncertainty in her face. She casts me a cur curiosity. Fuck. <laughs> Cast me a cursory look. Pretty sure I fucked it up, anyways. Anyways, uh, then shifts the nervous one to Isabel. Stays her with an almost hopeful gleam in her eye. Their fights never did last Isabel, long. Can we, can we talk alone? Her interruptions could not have come sooner, and I'm all the more glad for it. The kind of friendship I share with these two, with the two. This remains something for only the two of them, much my own with Zack. Actually, what's their friendship? <laughs> How did I- I left them all on a good standing. Just wanna review everyone, because she seems like shit's going down. Like, it doesn't matter with Zack, because he's dead. His friendship with them does not fucking matter. Marianne, Marianne really didn't interact with anyone. <laughs> Just the rights. And then Becca. Oh, that's the only character I fucked up so badly with. I hate it. I mean, besides Zack, that's the one fucking choice. Uh, so whatever kind of friend... Oh, uh, yeah. Now it's hard. They don't need me here. That's all the reason I need. <laughs> Muttering excuse, I'd be a hasty exit out the main lounge and leave them to spend things on their own. And that updated... Wasn't that? Um, let me see. See. Okay. <laughs> I left it off on a bad note. So, muttering excuse, I'd be a heavy exit out of the main lounge and leave them to the men, things on their own. Yeah, I just said that. Uh, before Isabel can say what she's been mewling over, before the last imploring glance she directs my way forces me to change my mind. It's not her lasting image that firmly etches itself in my memory. One that spurs the consciousness among the other things. I just hope I won't regret what I've chosen for myself tonight. Galloway Shell's Monday night crowd, although small and barely occupies a quarter of the whole pub, provides ample enough to cover for anyone who wishes to leave the place unnoticed. Just exactly what I need tonight. With the li lively music and chatter slipping out mostly unseen, comes a piece of cake. Without much trouble, soon enough I find myself standing outside under the chilly Luxembourg night. A gust of wind picks up shortly after I step out, carrying the telltale smell of pending rain. Give it about an hour or two before it starts. If the looks of it tonight will be another downpour, maybe even stronger than the one I the, than the one we've been we've had this morning. An instinct I hunch Further into my jacket, hugging its thick material closer to my body, while I weave my way through the lines of empty cars in the parking lot. The letter crinkles in my pocket with each. Oh wait, he took the letter. Each step I take, though so I pay, pay it no mind as I hurry towards my car. I've nicked it minutes ago from Isabel Belongings on my way out. If this is all connected, I need the stamp piece of paper with me. However, however ridiculous it sounds, I'm quite sure I won't be missed. Either, but I can't waste time here and wait for her to find out, can I? Four hours is all I'm giving myself to get this done. Regardless of how generous that is, each second's just as important as the next. So I hurry one footstep over the other, and as I make a beeline for my car. But as with every pain, problem for crops. Ugh. Whew. I've been speaking for constant now. Problems crop up at the last second. It's practically a universal rule. And it does. In the form of a lone figure waiting for me next to my car. Huh? Rebecca turns as I near the corner of her mouth, twitching up in my in a weary smile. She offers no green except for a slight tilt of her head. And as my pace slows, I look at her, all the unvoiced questions in my eyes. She remains wordless. 
merely throwing her back and shifting her attention up at the stairless sky. I come up to stand beside her. Another gust of wind blows as she breathes out a sigh. Where were you thick with something close to res resignation? Breeze carries all it away while she hugs her arms closer to herself to keep warm. Which raises the question why she's out here. There is a ray heavy with the promise of rain. Clouds obscuring the view. There's really nothing left at uh, <laughs> There's nothing really left to look at, but a dark blanket of nothingness. Still, she stands here as if she's intentionally waiting for everything to fall. That or she's here for someone other for some other reason. Before I can voice a single word, express a disapproval of any kind. She raises a halting hand at me, sharply cutting off the rest of my I'm question. I'm not here to stop you. Wherever it is you're planning to go off tonight, I won't be able to anyway. You look like you've already made up your mind. Go back inside. It's going to rain soon. It'll probably be even heavier than the downpour we had this morning. You wouldn't want to be caught in it. I will, in a moment. I just want to stay out here a bit for some air. Away from the noise inside. Everything's been so chaotic these days. This... a uh, little break is nice. Even if it means standing in the middle of a parking lot, of all places. Getting out of this mess would definitely be better, but... Hey, you take what you can get, right? It'll be over soon. The confidence in my words surprises even me. How do I know? Why am I so sure? In truth, what I'm about to do is the last ditch effort. If this fails, if I don't find anything, we're back to square one. It's the last lead I have. After this, we have nothing else to go off from. Regardless, it seems to amuse her. But her laughter soon sounds above the murmur, the distant traffic and the light. Traffic sweeping around us. Oh, I wish. I'll be content as long as she stops showing up in my mind whenever I close my eyes. I think that may take some time. The brain doesn't easily forget trauma. I can try, but, you know, it also did a lot to us. Oh yeah, a lot of fuckers. Tell me about it. The back of my head's still smarting from my fall last night. Not that kind. I'm talking about us. As... as people. I hate to admit it, but... This whole deal with the ghost... With the curse... It also brought out an ugly side to us. To all of us. Yeah, it has. <laughs> There's been a lot of irons between everyone. And it made me realize plenty of things. About myself. About... About us. Rebecca trails off. Suddenly a pensive expression spreads across her face. I've seen it countless of, countless of times before. Every time I see on her, it's usually followed by memory. A silly story, even something embarrassing I've said from childhood. Like me, who will much rather forget, she remembers each of them so easily. And after a short bow of silence, when she smiles, I know this is one of those times Do you again. Remember that one time back in secondary? Which one? We did a lot of dumb things back then. <laughs> well, I did, but you get the point. Mandy. <laughs> I thought you still don't like her. Don't tell me you've kept in contact with her. Are you guys friends now or something? Oh no. We do see each other sometimes, on the way to work or when I go out for lunch, but it's nothing like that. We're not friends, not in this lifetime. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever get along, but... But if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't even be friends, yeah? You stood up for me that day. And from then on... From then on, things have changed. She makes it sound like I'm some sort of hero. Mandy was in the wrong, of course. I'll defend her. If no one's going to stand up for her, who else will? Chances are, it would have escalated and who knows. Maybe she would have stopped going to school or transferred. Any decent human being with an ounce of sense should know better. I acted because I know what I'm doing is what's right. It's as simple as that. And she smiles as if it's worth more than that. Fondness that goes beyond nostalgia. I guess... I guess what I'm trying to get at is... This time, I... I don't want this to go unsaid. You know, just in case something happens. I... Ash, 
I've always been in love with you. She's... Oh. She says it so plainly, holding my gaze on in a voice too frank, that her admission stuns me into silence. The wind has suddenly been knocked out of me in one fell swoop. No words will form, not even a single coherent thought the meaning of her words bear down on me. Nevertheless, she continues desperate to express everything she has kept to herself all these years. Like, I'm surprised she's willing to say that. Because, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like that might not occur given, um, given their situation that I fuck up. <laughs> but I guess this is probably one of those things that is just automatic. For the story's sake. But good for you, Becky. You're finally telling him. This is what the f this is what the fondness is. My it weighs heavier than any feeling of sound just can since carry. That time in secondary, since I made that promise to never leave, I've always, always truly loved you. Ash, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Afterward, this is relief. A weight suddenly being lifted from her shoulders. After so long, she closes her eyes and lets out a bre breath. When she looks back at me, though, there's nothing but hope in them, eyes that are searching for an answer. Facing the sincerity behind her words, I find myself grasping, scrambling for the words. So as much as the pain, much as this pains me to admit, I can give her the same affection she's asking for me. God damn it, Ash! We have spent so many years alongside each other. Hell, we practically grew up together. But that never automatically means I'll ever hold for her feelings that goes beyond the boundaries of friendship. I do appreciate your presence in my life. I'm more than glad that she has stuck with me, even through the toughest moments. Even when she finds me difficult or aggravating. However, it's really all there is to it. She's a close and part friend to me. Rebecca, nothing more. I, I'm... Drawing a breath, ragged, unsure. Sorry, how and which words put together, so... It will hurt her less, so the wounds they might leave won't be as deep or a scar. But before I can even string two phrases together, it's a hand to my mouth and si silences me. Smiles on her face, kinder than every single one I've seen from her so far. It's nice to see it on her. It suits her more than the glares or the frowns. At the same time, it only serves to baffle me. You don't have yeah, to answer. But you should. I should... No, I mean, you don't need to. Okay, now I'm really confused. <laughs> One moment you're saying you've been in love with me since secondary, now you're telling me to shut up? If you want to interpret it like that, alright. No, really. Some explanation would be nice, Becca. Because a lot of things are going on right now, and I'm afraid I can't catch up. Especially with this curveball you just threw. It means what it means, Ashton. You don't need to answer me. I don't really need to hear it anymore. It's not that I don't want to. Believe me, if I were the same person I was before this whole thing happened to us, I'd be elated, excited even. But like I said, I, I also realized some things, understood myself more. Ash, I did love you. A change Ever of heart? Since we were kids, all those times you defended me from bullies. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Even after this. Hold on, let me look at this trophy. Oh, it just says a change of heart. But at the end of the day, once you take a closer look at everything, it also turned me into a really selfish person. God damn it! <laughs> Let me just say, I've seen a scene where they kiss, apparently. And I don't think we're gonna get that CG. Cause I fucked up. When you think about it, maybe the Ashton I loved isn't the one standing in front of me right now. No! <laughs> oh, dang it. I have more reason why I want to restart. <laughs> Maybe all this time, I'm still clinging on to that aloof kid I met 17 years ago. 
I didn't even consider that you have a mind of your own. That one day, it won't just be the two of us. That you'll find someone else, and... And it won't be me. I'm... I'm sorry, Becca. I'm not even sure what I'm apologizing for. I can't return her feelings, because I'm somehow holding myself responsible for this. Even if up until now, I have no idea how she felt. Regardless, she continues to smile through all of it. It's not your fault. Don't say that. I'm the one who should apologize. Since I suddenly sprung this up on you when you have other things to do. It's just... Oh. It's more reason why I feel like I can relate to her in her situation. Even if I fucked up. Oh. I just thought I should let you know. So I can finally let this whole thing go. One question, though. Are you going to tell her? Tell what to who? <laughs> I imagine she, because of her regretfully, she knows. <laughs> Pause for a brief moment of doubt while I try to figure out what she's talking about all of a sudden. When it finally sinks in, though, my bewilderment hazily gives way to utter embarrassment. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he abruptly crawls up my face, Noir. No matter my efforts to keep it down. In the end, I can only look away from her. Afraid of what else she'll see. Did you really think no one would notice? Was it. Was it that obvious? It was surprisingly easy to tell, but that was probably because I've known you longer than anyone. Fuck, who else knows? I think Zack suspects. Shit. You're embarrassingly lame when you're trying too hard. It's almost painful to watch. I hate it too. Zack's dead. Oh. Don't worry. With your terrible way of flirting, and knowing her, I'm quite sure Belle has no idea, even now. Not even a clue. Harsh, Rebecca. Really harsh. I could use a vote of confidence, you know. She laughs loud. The kind that's free of any burden. Bringing above the wind, slowly picking up the storm clouds approach. With it, however, the awkward atmosphere lifts, at last. It's only the camaraderie we've shared since meeting in that classroom 17 I'm years serious, ago. I'm serious, though. Tell her. And if you ever make her cry, I'll hit you with every damn history book <laughs> I have on my shelf. Clear? Noted, ma'am. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. I won't keep you long. I know you have things to do. Just promise me you'll be careful, all right? Becky doesn't wait for an answer. Instead, she gives me a pause, for it's only heavy enough to throw me off balance. Caught unawares, uh, caught unawares by the gesture for a few moments, I fight for a purchase against my car's trunk, bracing my hand on its smooth surface. When I look up with the string of primes ready at the tip of my tongue, Becca's array halfway through the parking lot. What is this gonna look like? I feel so bad. <laughs> All these choices that I've made is... God, I'm hating them now. Oh, when I look up with the string of her primes ray right at the tip of my tongue, Becca's a ray halfway through the parking lot. A small skip in her step. While the breeze carries the light, tune she's whistling. I want my let its notes be the last thing I commit to memory before slipping inside my car and driving off. Sounds like a new beginning more than anything. Another reason to be optimistic. Within 10 minutes, I'm driving out. Okay. So, being that this is basically the next scene, um, I'll end it here. So, with that, uh, I guess if you enjoyed the video, the like button. <laughs> Just feels so sad for Becky. Um, but yeah, if you want to know what's going to happen next, whatever Ash has in plan, probably to the mansion, um, maybe I'll subscribe button to be notified the next part, or just anything I do in general. And yeah, if you got anything to say, maybe tell me how bad I've, I've fucked up these choices now, um, <laughs> given the relationship I have with Ash and everyone else. Uh, I don't know, whatever you want to say, say in the comments below. And yeah, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Comrades.